Hey guys, welcome back to the No Name Business Podcast. We don't have a name yet, but we don't need that to uh, get started. My name is Brian Tran. I got my co-host here, PJ. What up, guys? How you doing? I got special guest back again, Brandon Tran. Thanks for having me back again, guys. And today's guest of honor is Raymond Cho. Hey, hey, hey. So Raymond is a special guest today because today I want to talk about it's never too late to start. And also, you know, Raymond has been working a W-2 job for how long? Like 15 years? Shoot. Yeah. Over that, I think. And so a lot of you guys out there watching this and listening to this is probably wondering like, man, 15 years, why and how do you even begin to quit your job and jump into this flipping, wholesaling, entrepreneurship at such later in life, right? And I'm here to tell you, and we're going to depict into this, how, why, and how he's crushing it today. You guys ready? Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, let's start off. Uh, let's I just want to ask, give the audience a small brief intro of, you know, who is Raymond Cho is. Yeah, for sure. So like Brian said, I've been, I've been working a W-2 job. I, I was a mechanical engineer coming out of college, working for, you know, mechanical consulting firms, doing uh, engineering design. Then I went into um, regulatory work, um, enforcing code, making sure the utilities are, you know, honest um, did that for like nine years. That was my last job. And then just jumped in with Brian and Brandon here, started working in real estate, doing all the different activities and, you know, grinding out there and really challenging myself. And so Ray didn't leave like a low paying job. Ray left a, a, a high six figure job to pursue, you know, this entrepreneurship, you know, Ray, what's going through your mind? Like why, why the sudden jump? I mean, most people would be comfortable. Yeah, I was just going to say, because I was like, he's talking about coding and engineering. He has a full degree. I was like, he's making money. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. My mom wasn't very happy about it because she paid my way through college. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, you know, I, I really, I don't think I was challenging myself. And I knew there was more out there for sure. Like, I always had it in the back of my mind, but never got, I guess, turned that switch on to really make that move until like really recently, you know, during covid I had a lot of time to think about it. I was working from home, um, yeah, grinding and, you know, hearing it left and right from my boss. And I, I was just getting tired of it, really. And then I see Brian and Brandon here doing real estate, killing it all the time. And I'm just like, man, there is something out there, you know? And, you know, it is never too late. Like, I knew this is what I wanted. So I just started planning for it, you know, my exit strategy to get out of that grind and just just pursue my dreams really go over the steps like what did you do um did you put money aside did you uh, like how did you mentally prepare and how long did it take was it like a day a month six months a year oh yeah no it wasn't overnight for sure man like i had to think about my kid my kid was born uh september 2020 i had to plan for that you know plan for my runway for six to nine months, even 12 months out. So definitely stacking away cash, saving that money, not spending on frivolous stuff, stupid stuff that I don't need. Um, yeah. And just planning my fixed expenses every month, you know, calculate that times six, nine, 12 months, whatever you want for your runway. And, you know, setting that up is really what will get you to succeed, right? Yeah. Cause it doesn't happen overnight. Like mm -hmm. you're not going to, start one day and then go a month and then start winning automatically instantly mm -hmm. like you got to put in the work you got to grind a bit set yourself up and then hopefully it'll it'll all pay off if you're consistent yeah uh i want to ask you know you said you just had like a newborn at the time of your transition like were you scared <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna lie i definitely was scared man i got a kid i got a mortgage to pay i got mm -hmm. cars i got bills you know it's mm -hmm. it's it's all it's all fixed cost, but you know, once you um, make that commitment, that mm -hmm. decision, like to go after it, it's not scary because you've planned it out, right? Mm -hmm. You know where the end of the line is, mm -hmm. and you know, hopefully, you don't reach that, and hopefully, you take off before then. But you at least have a deadline, mm -hmm. and that really, that really gives you what you need, the pressure, you know, to succeed because. After that, you're you're either broke and you got to get a job again, or 
you're succeeding in business. Mm-hmm. You have to feed the kid. Yeah. What was your yeah. runway for this one? Like, was it like, I'm going to give myself six months, nine months, a year? Yeah, I said six months. Um, which what did, uh, now what, did, that, what did you actually save up? <laughs> six months, literally. Like, I I could not go much further. I and it's I think we're beyond that now. Well, we're, but be, I still, we're definitely beyond that because <laughs> in flipping and in and yeah. you know because we start off you know you wholesale but you flip in flipping you just got to dump money in. Yeah. But I showed you the way. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I'm figuring that out. Yep. Raise an and, investor. <laughs> and you got to have that abundance mindset, yeah. or else you won't survive in this game. Like. If you're worried so much about all these costs, they're going to stack up it against you. And if you're worried about paying them with whatever you you saved up for your runway, it's not going to work. Yeah. It's yeah. And what Ray's stop. talking about is because we we bought um, there's he has two flips going on. One's going to be a long term hold. One is going to be done in about a week. Uh, as we film this today, it is November first, so it should be on the market by next week. Um, I you know. That's where I kind of showed you, like, we just got to find the good deals. And when you find good deals, people will give money to you. Mm-hmm. So now he's not even going into his six-month reserve anymore. Now, we're not commingling funds, but the project required 60, 70. Right. I think now it's a couple hundred thousand between the two projects, but it's mm-hmm. none of our own money. It's yeah. investor money, and we're paying them interest on it. We're leveraging people's money. For That's sure. the beautiful thing about real estate. Yeah, and if you think about it, each project, you might be putting 100, 150, 200,000 in. Like you can't, you can't leverage any of that money for any other purchases. Yeah. And if you're doing that, you're just going to run out yeah. that fast. Right. Cool. I want to cool. know, uh, you know, my next question would be, you know, you, you brought up your mom not being happy. That's going to be the number one thing that a lot of people go through. And so I want you to walk us through that. How many people, did you have any haters along the way? Did you have any naysayers, <laughs> any people who didn't believe in you? Let's talk about that. I don't think I had haters. Naysayers. Yeah. Like. You know, people are like, hey, you got a comfortable job. Yeah. Why? The safe route. Why? Exactly. Like, why are you putting yourself through this suffering, your door knocking, your cold calling, putting you putting yourself through all this pain when you kind of made it? Yeah. But I was I just tell them, you know, I'm not happy with that. Yeah, I think I by your more. standard, you're like, I didn't make it. Yeah, exactly. That's a great thing to like realize. And I and, and understand, you know, I appreciate my parents. Totally. They put me through college. Mm-hmm. They set me up for a good job. I was able to buy a house because of that, right? Like forever, forever thankful, mm-hmm. right? But, you know, for, from their mindset to this, to me now, like, I think they would appreciate that I'm trying to be a lot better than what they expect, mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah, I'm in a better position compared to them when they, you know, immigrated here. They be- didn't speak a lick of English. They had to do like dishwashing, bussing tables, like really labor, labor intensive jobs. And I didn't have to do that. Um, so, yeah, but, you know, they doubted. They didn't think, I, you know, I could actually put myself out there to do that. But, you know, I think uh, I'm proving them wrong. And, and now I'm we, making them. Happen. Now we buy houses like we buy clothes, like yeah. people buy clothes. We like. Yeah, I mean, I've seen them live. I've seen the deals live, and it's a pretty juicy guy. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, we just kind of go in and, all right, does it make sense? Boom, make the offer. And these houses are amazing, guys. So, I mean, if this is the YouTube video, I'm going to put up uh, some of the screenshots of the work that they're doing, and they're doing some amazing work. Amazing work. So, houses are about to be on the market. We we make them amazing. We don't buy them amazing. (laughs) Oh, yeah, sorry. That's that's only us, you know. That's that's the specials (laughs) of them. That's what they do. But they are amazing buys. So, you know, that's that's the whole deal, you know. And we're comfortable doing that. I I, I Definitely, I was scared Mm. starting off. I, You know, I'm not used to buying houses every, you know, whatever month or Mm. two months. So, you kind of get over that once you start doing it, once you get more comfortable, with buying these deals like, yeah comes second nature after that i mean i just want to let you know ray i mean i met you like in the beginning and not once did i see fear in your face so <laughs> yeah you good poker it. face man so all right so he brought up his parents yeah and i think a lot of our viewers out here uh have wives have partners ray's also married yeah. what was your wife thinking when you were like i'm quitting she definitely was supportive um uh, I think I'll be real. This is the real podcast. 
<laughs> I think she truly doubted me, but <laughs> you know, but she was still supportive. That's the key thing. Yeah. As long as you know, she could think whatever she wants. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. But as long as she's like, yeah, do whatever makes you happy. If this is what you want to do, then put it put it all on the line and go for it. That's that. That was basically it. Like, it was great. Like, that's all the support I need. I don't he, need someone to you know say hey. You and can I, do yeah, it. Yeah, I think you dropped the real gem there because I'm married, Ray's married, you guys aren't, Brandon and, and PJ here. So you need to find a partner in this entrepreneurship. Either you do it alone and then you get rich and then you find your partner. That's yeah. one way. But if you're grinding right now mm-hmm. and you're trying to make it, your partner needs to be on board. Yeah. And they have to support you. Now, they may think what they want to think, but what comes out of their mouth, it better be support. Yeah. <laughs> you know, otherwise... It's hard enough. Yeah. And so you need a supportive partner. And then, you know, leveling up from that is you actually need a partner that you can talk to, bounce ideas off of, mm-hmm. and be a, kind of an unbiased opinion. Mm-hmm. That's the second part. But that's another, that we can go on a whole podcast <laughs> no, yeah, definitely. on that. I mean, we, <laughs> but, we, we actually should do a podcast. Yeah, we should. That, but this know? one, I'm just saying, like, that's the thing. You got to support your partner. Definitely. Yeah. I think it makes a big difference, you know, because it's easy, you know, especially on the younger, younger side to get detiered from where you want to go, you know, because a lot of things can affect you. Just like, easily, it's like, hey, let's go out here. Let's go out there. Or like, you know, your, your partner might not be okay with you working like six, eight, yeah. ten hours a day just grinding, and, you know, but that's the sacrifice that you need to make and that they need to understand. So, yeah. And, sure. and I, I think we're lucky because our wives, they're entrepreneurs. No, no, so, no. no. We supported them. Yeah, well, yeah, we supported them, but and they then, understand and the then, grind. And then now they understand. Yeah. Well, I, you know, for you, they, she couldn't say anything to you because <laughs> you supported them when they were growing. I was yeah. supported her when, yeah. you know, same thing. So, yeah. But at the same time, they, you know, because they went through that, because they had to suffer through that, they understand definitely like starting from the ground up. Yeah. Like this is what it takes. Oh, yeah. So if they see you doing that, they're like, great. You're doing what we did. We respect that. I love it. I love it. Get yourself a supportive partner, guys. Absolutely. But I want to go ahead and this is a question that all of you guys, you know, could chime in, could, <clears throat> sorry, could kind of chime in. Um, Ray, I want to ask you, so, you know, earlier we were talking about, you know, having that fear, right? Like what, what helped you like with that fear? Like how do you overcome that fear of like, you know, taking these big leaps? Like what is your, your process for that? I think having a team like these guys pushing you and a whole support system, it definitely helps. Like you could do it alone. Definitely. Like, but you know, getting that motivation, getting that drive, it has to come from yourself as well, but also a network of people that are, are bringing you up helps a lot for sure. Because without that, like, at least for me, I don't think I'd be able to like drive myself to make those calls, make those door knocks. But if you have a team, like I like working with a team, um, it just, you know, you, you're unstoppable. Yeah. You're confident. Yeah. Like, because you know, you have a, a whole team backing you right behind you and they're not going to let you fail. Yeah. I said it before. What's going to get you through this recession that we're in is the relationship that you have. Now that's team, but really that's the best investment you can uh, really put your money into right now. Yeah. Your team, your relationship, building that, strengthening it. Because with that, it's very hard to fail. Just like a stool, right? If you you only have one leg, very easy to tip over. Three, four, if you had 20 legs on one stool, can you imagine? Yeah. Powerful. 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 (laughs) I think we're going to start off with a a new school company. Yeah. (laughs) Brandon, what question do you have, Brandon? What question you got for Ray? Yo, yo, we didn't get a full answer from everybody. Oh, what's that? Hold on, hold on, Brian. Stop picking on me. Hold on, hold on. So, Brandon, 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 how how would you overcome the fear or how do you like handle overcoming the fear of of big leaps and and taking big risks? Oh, man, I think it's just uh, kind of entrepreneur nature. You got to have a fight. Was it fight or flight, right? Mm. Reaction time. And mm-hmm. it's either we fight and we, we do what we have to do to succeed or you sink and you swim, and, you know, yeah. or you, you die. So for sure, you just got to succeed. You know, like Ray quit his job. If he doesn't work, can't feed the kid, can't go out, can't go buy nice things. Yeah. What can you do? You got to go. 
like a zero option mentality. Like zero option. You have, I'm you not going to lose. Confident. Like I'm just yeah. do it. Yeah. You just got to win. Yeah. I like it. What about you, Brian? How do you, what was the question again? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> all good. All good. Fear? All good. How do it you was, overcome fear? How do you, yeah. how do you handle and what is your process to handling and overcoming the fear of like taking like really big risks and, and, and just really overcoming that? The way that I usually do it in the day, I can just tell you the short answer is I just go, mm-hmm. but it, but it's not right. I always, and I take the situation and you oh, play, let me ask first. Do you, yeah. You, you get scared still during doing some big deals. I mean, you get scared. I get, no, I actually get excited now. Okay. Because I never risk. Like I'm at a point in my life where I don't double down on everything. Yeah. In the beginning, it was more scary because you, when you don't have a lot of money and an opportunity comes up, like let's say a flip and it requires 200,000 and that's all you have, uh-huh. you have to double, you have to go all in. Yeah. Right. But I'm now at a point in my life where every investment that I go in, if it goes wrong, it, I will be okay. Yeah. But I've, I've earned that. Yeah. It, it's come with the experience. And so, you, know. you know, when you hit a certain point there, there isn't a, you don't have to go double down every single time. Mm-hmm. I invest maybe 30, not even maybe 35% of my net worth. Mm-hmm. Right. So that if anything happens, I'll be 35% poorer, but I'm okay. Mm-hmm. Whereas some people I know till this day will go hundred percent all in. If it doesn't go right, they're broke and and that's okay too but you hit a certain stage and i have kids i have two kids i got a wife i got mortgages i got uh, my mom and all that stuff that i got to take care of so i can't afford to do that anymore so i don't get scared i get excited because i'm like okay this works i just you know i'm gonna build something big Mm -hmm. um but going back to how do you overcome the fear you still have to do some due diligence you have to analyze the deal you have to play chess not checkers checkers is is a cup a matter of being a couple moves ahead but you got to look at the deal, and then from a, a 10,000 aerial view, you look down and you go, okay, if I do this deal, let's say we do this flip, and it goes well, we can do a 1031 exchange, right? Like Daily City, we're going to do a 1031 exchange after the year. Yep. During that time, we're going to cash flow. If it doesn't, we'll break even. That's okay. But then we'll, we'll pull out in year one uh, or year two because hopefully the interest rate gets better. We can buy a big multi-unit building, Yep. right? So I'm, I'm already kind of planning the whole thing out in my mind to where it's not scary. And I run through the bad scenarios too. Like, yeah. oh shoot, okay, rates don't look good. Airbnb crashes in the area. We get caught, we get flagged or whatever it is uh, for doing Airbnb because I don't know, they always constantly change the rules. Okay, well, what can I rent this place out for? Right, 4,000, 5,000. Our note on that thing is $2,600. Yeah. Okay, we're still cash flowing 1,400. That buys us time for another year. So I'm, I'm running all these scenarios yeah. And then that makes me comfortable because I'm like, okay, I've already ran through the hundreds of scenarios. Mm-hmm. So I'm not scared because if this happens, boom, I'm going to make this play. If that mm-hmm. happens, boom, we're going to go this play. Multiple exits. Yeah. 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 To, to summarize, you know, what you said for the, for the viewers. Yeah. Sounds like you're saying, you know, if you're going to do something, if you're going to take a big risk, take a big leap, you best have some type of plan. You know, if you're 100%. trying to be like a realtor, don't go out and just be like, I'm going to be a realtor and then. Have nothing, you know. Know what team you're going to join. Exactly. Know how many hours you're going to commit. Have your six month reserve. Mm-hmm. These are those are the the moves that you got to play. Yeah. Basically, set yourself up to win. Yep. For sure. And Brian hit on a good point. Like you got to be comfortable with what you're risking too, right? Like that's why I partnered up with different mm-hmm. people like Brandon and Brian here. Mm-hmm. I don't want to take on a four hundred thousand dollar project by myself. Mm-hmm. That's just too much risk for me. I I'd feel more comfortable purchasing at you know. A quarter of that or half of that mm-hmm. so bite off what you're comfortable chewing right yeah. and then there won't be any fear yeah you'll be confident you'll be like okay i can lose this much mm-hmm. that's fine i'll make it back somewhere else if that happens but as brian said you also have multiple exit strategies so you don't lose mm-hmm. there there shouldn't be there's a low chance you will lose if not you'll just break even right calculated risk that's yep. it and at the end of the day, it's always going to be scary, but the, you know, it, you get used to it. Yeah. Like you asked me why, why I, I don't get scared now because I've done it so many times. Yeah. I started nine companies. Yeah. And you know, shoot, not all of them went up well. They're, they're, they're going well now, but dude, they all had their problem. Yeah. Coffee shops when COVID happened, shut down. I have $20,000 in leases. I got to pay. Jeez. How am I going to pay this? <laughs> I mean, they all served so, you well too. Yeah. Right? And they it, all it, benefited it, you. And in, it does build way. you a tougher skin. Cause now I'm like, ah, eh, whatever. Yeah. You know, my yeah. first 
That has to be the worst, huh? Yeah. It'd be a year in COVID. And the thing two. is, that, and I'm going to bring up a side note, but man, my wife and everybody else with no businesses were trying to tell me, stay home. I'm yeah. like, are you kidding me? Are you going to write me a check for $20,000 a month? Yeah. Like, it didn't even matter how much reserve I had. How long can you last when all your businesses were told to stop yeah. And, yeah. and make no money? Now, it's easy to look back and say, oh, PPP and all that stuff came through, but... At the time, nobody knew. Dude, I was like driving around the town. I'm like, dude, okay, who's open? Are they busy? Do they have customers? Yeah. Yes, no. Okay, great. And then that's when I pivoted and said, okay, we're going to open. We're going to yeah. serve to go. We're going to do something. Yeah. I got to I got to get some money through the door. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's easy when you have a W 2 job and everybody's like, oh, just stay yeah. home. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, it's okay. Dude, that's because your company's uh, paying for you. I don't like, I don't have no checks coming in. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I was happy to be cruising in my W 2 job yeah. at that time. Dude, I'd be shaking my boots if I had a store. It's a, it's a, it's a different time for you now. Right? Yeah, so I have a question. I have a question for you, Ray. So yeah. Brian was just talking about, you know, it took him years, right, to build that confidence. You've been in the business for maybe about six months, maybe? six months a year. Yeah. I haven't seen you sweat once. <laughs> I'm sweating at home. At, man. <laughs> at, at what point? Because now when we bring the deal by you, you're pretty quick. Like yeah. within the hour, yeah. you know. Yes, no. Let's do it. Yeah. Like when did you kind of get over that fear? I really don't. I still have that fear. No, to be honest. And like I said, just having a team like and building that network of people that have funds and getting that access to funds, that helps a lot. Like I have a lot of people I can trust that will loan me the money or invest in the deal. And, you know, I'm comfortable with that. Like, and I'm not going to screw them over. I'm going to pay them back either way. Like, if that means I break even, sure. If I have to lose some money, that's fine. But, you know, I know I did my due diligence. I did my calculations. I, I made sure there's as little risk as possible for the deal. And I make people aware of that. So I'm very transparent. Um, so that makes me that much more comfortable. Like, it's like PJ said, calculated risks, right? Like, if you know what's out there as much as you can, like understand it as much as you can and just dive into it with all your realtors as much as you can, you like, hey, what's stopping you? Like, there really isn't anything else to think about. I've thought a, a lot of it through, right? Like, and if, you know, you know that, then the, that fear kind of comes down. It's still there, yeah. but you can't get rid of it all the way but it, yeah the confidence overpowers yeah. then right yeah, exactly it's like the knowledge you know knowledge comes confidence and yeah and yeah. it definitely yeah. helps you know understand you know diving in with these guys and all, into the industry uh just two feet in um uh, that learning curve is just quick yeah. right yeah you can do it on your own make all the mistakes but that's not the right way to do it you don't need to make the mistakes to learn yeah, you can read books and see people's pivotal like mistakes, and then say, "Okay, we're not going to make that same one." And so that's why you got to, if if you're just starting out, join a team, partner with somebody who is doing it, who knows what they're doing, so you don't make mistakes. Because, like I said earlier, when you have money, you can make little mistakes, not going to hurt you. In the beginning, you need to make as little mistakes as possible because, in you know, in real estate, it's a it's a sizable amount of money yeah right so partner up you may be like oh man but then if i partner up i'm gonna give up 50 percent of the deal well if you did it, if you do things incorrectly like in this market and it and the market goes down you're out to lose 50 yeah. percent. you yeah. know or maybe even worse the whole thing because you can't make payments on the uh the hard money note or whatever it is so sure find good people go to networking events see who you're compatible with see who got balls big balls <laughs> in this market and, see if the, and, 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 and bring value <laughs> Bring value and see if you yeah, can, what you can do to help them. I mean, that's true. Completely. Right? Completely yeah. true. You know, you like, bring value, though. Yeah, how, how do you ball check them? Man, you got to like smack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So, hey, yo, pause. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo. Yo. Hey, yo. All right, guys. So uh, we're getting towards the end of the podcast, and uh, I just want to wrap it up. I'm going to ask, you know, Raymond, one last question. No, I got another one, but go ahead. You got another one? Yeah, I got the last oh. one. All right. All right. All right. So I just... No, nah, yeah, you, you go first Shoot. because mine's oh, just like the last. Yeah, one. you want to ask it? Okay, yeah, right. yeah, so Ray, we'll try to make it cool. You know, your 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 time here on Earth. If you could do something differently, right? Knowing what you know now, what would you do differently? Well, I I I would have made this jump 
a lot earlier. I'm, I don't even know if I would even go to college at this point, but I'm glad I did because I picked up a lot of skills working with teams, mm-hmm. working with different people, and um, that you can't really replace that experience and uh, kind of understanding where other people are coming from and uh, just getting all different perspectives. Ultimately, you live your life and you and, and you are where you are today because yeah. of your actions, which yeah. is great. So, but I, you know, that's good to hear that, you know, make that jump and get into the entrepreneurship earlier. Yeah. I mean, I think if I took a break after high school, mm. explored, traveled a little bit, if, if I had the means, mm-hmm. uh, I would have, then I would have figured out, you know, what, what really drives me, what's my passion, things like that, instead of, you know, kind of doing the, the traditional, it's a traditional Asian thing, yeah. right? You know, you get into a profession, accounting, engineering, you become a doctor, whatever, high paying, uh, high net worth job. And, you know, people are happy with that. And that's, that's fine. That's completely fine. Because you could make tons of money, yeah. you know, as a W2 employee. But um, for me, I just, I just hate taking orders. <laughs> hey, what was your question, PJ? Well, I'm just going to wrap it up. You know, last question. Just want to, Ray, what's what's your final piece of advice for anybody out there who's really just trying to quit their nine to five job and and you know either pursue their passion or pursue what's really calling for them? Like, what's what's your one piece of advice for them? Listen to this podcast. Uh, <laughs> no, nice no but seriously, like it's all it's it's all planning. Like planning to succeed will you know setting yourself up for success is the way. Like that's that's everything. Yeah, that's everything. And challenging yourself, pushing yourself to do the things you don't want to do is is basically what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. Like I as an engineer, I never uh, talked to random strangers. We were forced to talk together because we had to work together. Right. Like uh, to to design something, to work with a sales team who's providing, you know, uh, products for you to to install, whatever it is it is like they're all paid to talk to me like in this industry and in in real estate like you have to grab someone's attention and you have to keep it somehow whatever it takes so that's that's kind of what i'm learning awesome awesome let's wrap it up pj yeah well that's the end of the podcast thanks everybody for watching give us a like give us a follow because we'll be back with some more banger podcast guys thank you thanks raymond thanks for coming to the show thank you thank you for having me oh